Let's get started with animation. Hello friends all over this planet and maybe the moon and uh, I want to talk about Bullet today. Bullet is a plugin which is automatically installed in Maya, I think since the year 2010 or 11 or something like that. It's a dynamic simulation system and uh, it has uh, a few problems which you might find frustrating and I want to show you just one detail of this really complex plugin. If you don't have it, um, actually it uh, should be under FX here and then you see the bullet menu here. If you don't have it, go to Windows and the Settings pre Preferences, the Plugin Manager and there type in bullet and then you need to activate the plugin. You also find, once you've activated it, the bullet icons right here. I didn't study most of them anyway, but it doesn't matter. I start with a very simple thing, which is uh, basically a sphere. So um, let me go back here to this shelf. I like these shelves, really. And uh, let's create this polygon sphere. I move it up here and I convert it bullet into an active rigid body. You see the blue line is starting to work here. This is because the simulation is being calculated and the sphere falls down because it has gravity. What we do now is we create a plane and we scale this up quite, quite a bit like this and we tilt it so that the sphere rolls down once it's fallen down. The sphere will fall through the plane because we need to select the plane and create a passive collider or, co or call a passive rigid body here. Passive rigid body. I think under the icons here it is this one. You see in the status li line below create a passive rigid body object. We run the simulation and the sphere does not roll down and that's basically what I want to show you in this tutorial. Why does it not roll down? Well because you need to go to the sphere settings and here you find the bullet dynamics and in the bullet dynamics under collider properties you find collider shape is set to a box and that's actually this box which you see around our sphere now. So the simulation behaves as if the sphere was a cube. And if you change this from box to sphere, this is, uh, I think this is a typical bullet bug. You need to delete the cache. Right mouse click in the timeline and just get rid of the cache here. So you have to run this, this is a pretty sim sim uh, simple simulation. You have to just run it and you see the sphere is rolling down and when we expand the timeline here to say 500 frames we'll probably see that it rolls off our plane. So this is the first thing I wanted to show you here. It is has to do with the geometry and you need to go to the bullet rigid body shape nodes in order to find out how to shape the collider actually. Uh, in most simulations you probably are fine with the box shape. Uh, another thing which is important is the hull and the hull is basically uh, the actual geometry so uh, it will have the same effect but it takes a little bit longer to calculate. Now let me delete this, this sphere. We introduce an object which is slightly more complex like for example a super ellipse which looks like a sphere when we go to the settings here we can use the random function here and uh, it's the same thing. Let's make it a little bit bigger like this and we need to make it a bullet active rigid body. So it falls down and it behaves like a cube. If we make it behave like a sphere 
does it behave well? Well, you see already it's close to that actual shape, but the rolling process is too smooth. It doesn't respect that it, this object has edges. It looks as if a ball was rolling down. That's why we use the hull in this case. And before I run the simulation, I'll show you something else here, which is the initial conditions. And here you can give our object an initial velocity, minus one, because that's the x-axis, the red one. Once you understood this about the bullet solver, you will have no problem with simulation of complex geometry. I show you an example here, or three examples actually, with um, the normal rigid body solver in Maya, which is sitting here on the fields and solvers, and it's called create active and passive rigid body. These two, they're called legacy rigid bodies, but uh, they still work very nicely and they do a great job. For example, this one is this active rigid body on a passive rigid body. So this, the objects are sliding down and this is the bullet, the same th objects with the bullet solver. Again, the rigid body dynamics with more objects. Is the bullet solver again where you need, where I needed to put in all the information about the geometry. This is a hull, the torus's hull. So basically they behave uh, the same and people say that um, you should consider using the bullet solver when you deal with more complex objects and this is what I'm going to show you now. We need a complex geometry and a nice complex geometry is a free skeleton. Under free, C, free 3D you find for example these skeletons, there are two, in three formats that's 3D Studio, Object and uh, some other format which I don't know. And uh, it's actually two skeletons and you can download them just without pain. Just uh, download it costs zero dollars and it's made very nicely. But you probably find lots of other skeletons as well. The skeleton is on my hard drive now and I have it in the three formats. Mental Ray, I guess, uh, 3D Studio and Object. We choose the object and just drag it in here. We don't care about the textures. If we would care about the textures, we had to properly move the files to our current project and these images into the source images folder. Okay, we have um, two skeletons and let us for simplicity reasons just delete one of them and now I select all the bones here. Some, most of them are called groups I guess because it's a s symmetrical so when I pick this one this is also picked here. So that's probably the reason for this and I select them all and now I go to bullet and instead of active rigid body, passive rigid body, I use a rigid set. The rigid set basically considers the whole object as one simulation object. I can imagine why it's good but um, I've, I've seen in the documentation just to use this with complex objects here. And uh, this certainly is a complex object and now we run the simulation. And what it does is very typical for bullet. Uh, it just explodes things everywhere. I made a freeze of this state here and created a little animation, a turntable animation. And I rendered it in black and white more or less. Interesting here is that you don't see the depth when you watch single frame but once you run the animation which is the turntable you will actually see what's in the back and what's in the front uh, this is a very interesting effect really when it comes to thinking about depth and geometry all of a sudden 
things are in space. As I said, uh, this is not the simulation. It's uh, I think I rendered froze frame 13 or something like that when the skeleton was half exploded. How can we get this really harsh explosion under control? It's basically frame zero here or one. The next frame is already this. And the next one is this, so it really does that explosion process very fast. And the reason for that is bullet thinks of each bone here as a box. And we need to go to the bullet solver here and go to the bullet rigid set initial state. And here again we need to go to collision attributes and here you see the box. And when we change this box to the hull, it takes a second for the calculation, and what we can all also do is under the main bullet solver shape here we set the ground plane so we don't need to introduce a ground plane. Now we don't see the ground plane, it's basically the, the level of the grid, it's all over the scene. And now when we run the simulation we get a much less harsh explosion. There are means to make this much smoother, but you have to dive into the system yourself because it's so complex, really. You can change the gravity, for example. Does this make a change? It certainly does, because it takes much longer for the particles to settle on the ground. You also can play with the default mass and the damping, etc. And now it's up to you to clean this whole mess up. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.